No or yes? OK, there we go. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Good afternoon, some of the colleagues for this most important panel, not because it is the first and only panel that we have had for the day, but especially with all respect for the dignitaries, this is the panel where farmers will speak about everything you have heard about science, innovation, and how it impacts them. Thank you. So we have brought for you together at this panel two farmers from uh, our work, and of course also Lindewe Sibanda, who is our uh, uh, leader from the CJR system. We will hear her stories from Africa and Latin America, and we will share some learning with you. Those of you that do not know me, my name is Bram Hovarts, and I'm today the Director General of CIMED. But I'm also very honored that I was one of the Borlock Field Award uh, winners, and I could hear my colleague say that she will do transformational things thanks to this stage, and I can tell you that does happen. When I was here on the stage, I promised to follow Dr. Borlock's request to take it to the farmer. To reach for the stars, because as he said, then at least you will uh, catch some stardust. And I received the prize because of the work with Take It to the Farmer. Actually, our team received the prize because we were trying to take it to the farmer through Masagro. Masagro, a big program that has started 15 years ago. And it started when Dr. Borlaug visited for the last time the uh, Obregon station, the station in Mexico where Simit's wheat program does a lot of the wheat breeding, that wheat that goes to the rest of the world and today comprises of 70% of the wheat grown globally, also 60% of the wheat grown here in the US. You will understand that's not done by Simit alone, that's done by a network of public and private partners. Thanks to that idea, we started a unique adventure, an adventure in which we combined public and private sector farmer organizations, but also were cheered on by big leaders like Bill Gates himself and Carlos Slim, who decided to invest in training capacities and in research capacities on the way. We took Simit's gene bank that has 28,000 different maize accessions and 150,000 different wheat accessions. And in the Masagro program, we started 14 years ago, we characterized all that biodiversity that today is used in one of the aim for climate, and you heard Secretary Vilsack about that, sprints to actually build climate and nutritious, nutrition resilient crops. We also developed new seeds. And when I describe that to farmers, I always say it's a little bit take us like taking a very handsome man and a very smart woman, and what we want is handsome and smart kids. As they are your kids, they're always handsome and smart. Sometimes they also come out ugly and a little bit. Those ones we leave behind when it's about seeds. Those new and nutritious seeds need to reach farmers, and that's where we set up seed systems. More than 50 local seed companies developing and using their infrastructure to take those seeds to the farmers. And then, of course, farmer-centered innovation. Innovation that builds the system around all those inventions so that it can really work for farmers towards not livelihoods, but livelihoods trajectories because your livelihood is not the same when you have a small family than when your kids need to go to school or when you're an older couple still living off the farm. The networks quickly grew, multiple farmers, multiple local entities, more demand than we probably could take, but also long-lasting uh, impact. We were asking from our partners to not go for the immediate win, but for the longer-term game. Three, four years later, when all that happened, it was when the team was rewarded with the Norman E. Borlock Field Award for Field Research and Application, a very long title. What we did was taking it from the lab to action. The award really launched the project and the team. And still today, I want to ask you to congratulate the team, the hundreds of farmers, the thousands of young technicians, Everything that happened, it's thanks to them. Everything that went wrong, 
is thanks to me. Therefore, nine years later, I do want to tell you what happened. I promised back then to the ambassador that I will be back on the stage to account for the impact that we had achieved, the achievements the team had built. After 10 years of the program, and I do want to recognize the bold decision of the Mexican government to invest in a program for 10 years constantly, because that allowed us to reach 500,000 smallholder farmers that improve, improved their maize and wheat production systems on more than 1 million hectares in 30 states in Mexico. It increased on average 20% the yield and 23% the income for those farmers. Over 50 small seed companies could take up 35% from only 20% of the market share of the seed uh, systems or the seed sold in the country. Today we have a molecular atlas that is available for everybody that wants to consult it. There's a cutting edge data system that is monitoring life in real time over 20,000 farms and is analyzing and generating indicators that now the industry can use so they can tell you how sustainable your cereal, your bread was produced. Companies that were uh, uh, previously, uh, previously sorry, importing a lot of the grain are now buying them from small farmers in the country. Seed got accompanied with agronomy, with systems, with post-harvest technology, with small, smallholder machinery, the whole value chain got integrated. Or like Rashad just said, remembering Gordon Conway, you can innovate all the time, and I would add to it, along the whole value chain. This stage also allowed us to replicate this program in Central America through Buena Milpa, where we started to work with grassroots organizations and build up also that innovation system. Today, that system is ready in order to reinvest and build and scale it out, and it actually brought a new element to the table, which is how can we use these innovation systems against or to combat migration. You may think that the most important element was the technology, but actually the most important thing was to listen to the end user. Exactly something my colleague from Italy, who just won the award, was also highlighting to you. Actually, the most important aspect was not technical or technological. It was psychological. It was working with the people. It was working and building consensus about a common objective, a common worldview of an agricultural sector that actually could respond to the needs of those that work in it and to the society that lives from it. A complex self-sustained innovation network that when our funding stopped two years ago, today still sustains. I did not want to give and come these results here. I wanted to test first if they were real and if they would sustain the test of time. That is why only today two farmers will give their testimony. Before we listen to them, I want to thank for those that made it possible that today the same concept is applied in Central African Lakes region and in the Malawi, Zambia and Tanzania area thanks to investments by the U.S. government after the Ukraine-Russian war in order to respond to the increasing food prices. And I want to thank Dina Esposito, Assistant uh, Administrator, and Carrie Fowler as a special envoy for helping us to make that possible. Therefore, with no further ado, don't believe anything I said and hear it from the experts. I present to you the Honorable Farmer from Argentina, Maria Pilu Giraudo. I also present to you, all the way from Tlaxcala, the Honorable Guillermo Breton. And last but not least, the one and only, Lindewe Mayele Sivanda. So, Pilu, we are here and we are ready for your story. I'm not going to say anything anymore. <laughs> we're just, as you know, going to listen. Over to you. I need to say thank you, thank you, thank you very much for this invitation. You know, for a farmer to be at the World Food Prize is like a gift, the best gift. Thank you, thank you so much. 
And thinking about farming and thinking about agriculture, which are the most important challenges of the global, for the global agriculture? They ask us to produce more with less, to produce more quantity and quality with less footprint, thinking on being more efficient with the use of water, thinking about soil caring, thinking about emissions and several technologies. Also trying to change to renewable energies, promoting biodiversity and also resilience for our production systems. It seems to be a lot for a farmer, but it's not. We are prepared. Nature is our inspiration. We know that we must go in that way, but we cannot do it alone. We need science. We need science close to us. We, need, we know the, the real needs in the different regions, the different situations, the, the different productions, but we need science to research with us to develop the right technologies and to help us for the, implement, the adoption and the implementation. Also, the adaptation of the different technologies for the different situations. And when we talk about this, we are thinking about a holistic approach where we have different actors with different skills and uh, we need to think about the private and the public sector. And this approach needs to be very close also to policy makers, because we need the right policies in order to apply the right technologies. Most of the times, we have the right, policy, the right technologies, but we don't have the, policy, the right policies to apply them. That is a crucial point for us. It is very important. And um, um, it's, it's the best way to highlight Masagro, you know? Because I'm a fifth generation farmer in my family. I belong from a very important farmer organization, APRESID, the Argentinian No-Till Farming Association that these farmers decided more than 30 years ago to begin working under a regenerative system, a regenerative model for agriculture based on no-till farming. And that was about the confidence between farmers. And after that arrived science to validate the farmer's proposal, you know? And uh, that is a, a very good example um, for uh, why we are confident and to be able to have the opportunity to achieve the goals, not only locally, also globally. Also, I am a, a rural woman, you know, a rural woman, and I am part of a rural women member uh, network. And I would like to tell you that rural women, we are more than 25% of the global population. And we are involved in more than 40% of the labor around agriculture. And for example, just an example, if we have the opportunity to have full access to science and technology for rural women. The reduction of hunger in first place and the growth of economy second place have the opportunity to have great improvements. And I am also part of the Global Farmer Network. In the Global Farmer Network, we are more than 20, 250 farmers from more than 60 countries all around the world. And uh, we represent different geography, economy, policies, um, needs, conditions. But at the end of the day, we have the same, the same challenges. And 
thinking again about Masagro. We have the opportunity to share the experience. We can adapt the experience in different parts of the world. And I was thinking about how we knew Masagro. I have, personally, I have the opportunity to visit the different hubs of Masagro and have a lot of exchange with the technicians and the farmers. But there are a lot of farmers in my country and all around the world that they, they didn't have that opportunity. But they knew the proposal about the media. And that is another great Great, great tool for us, for farmers, for exchange the right technologies and to exchange the opportunity to adapt them all around the world. But I will to insist in the point that we need to be together, farmers, science, and policymakers. We are committed to human being demands, the basic needs, and we need to be prepared. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Pilu, and, and, and very impressive how you also highlight the, how you are a driver, a catalyst of change, thanks to Twitter, Facebook, radio. Uh, I know you have a fantastic morning radio program. Um, Guillermo, that brings us to you, farmer from Tlaxcala. How, how did you got, get connected to Masagro? Take it to the farmer. Thank you, Bram, to invite me here. Uh, I'm thrilled to, to be here, uh, but overall, thank you for help Mexican farmers to open our eyes to the right technology. Uh, this, this is uh, a great thing you, you are doing with, with Masagro and, and with Simit. Uh, I'm Guillermo Breton. I'm a fifth generation farmer from Tlaxcala, the smallest state of Mexico uh, in the highlands, pretty close to Mexico City, about 100 kilometers. I own all my, almost 200 hectares, what is an average property in Mexico. Uh, and maybe I, I, I could be a, a small farmer in other other countries, uh, I am part of the, I am member of the Global Farmer Network as PILU also. Um, and we, we, are, we, we see that many, many kind of, of farmers in all over the world. I farm in irrigated land and also in rain fed. Mm, I have, at least three stories with Simit. <laughs> the first is a beautiful one. My father was a Dr. Borlaugh's uh, collaborator, a collaborator farmer for the wheat reproduction, pro reproduction pro program in the 60s. Uh, Dr. Borlaugh needed quick increments of wheat materials. So in Mexico, he promoted Two, cycle, two cycles per year, the winter in the north, in Sonora, and, this, uh, and in the summer in the center in the highlands. So Dr. Borlo went to our farms. Uh, my, my mother uh, gave the table for, for him and the, his agronomist, his engineers. So that's, that's a, a nice story. This, the second is a functional one. Uh, my, need, my need to the, of, of a forage, uh, so I went to see me for triticale uh, as a forage crop. Uh, triticale works pretty, pretty well in, in winter for silage or for raising cattle. Uh, in summer, in the highlands, we, we use it for grain uh, and for seed also. And the third story is a strategic one. Masagro as a disruptive way to understand agriculture. Uh, this is a changing la 
Lives and Changing Perspectives Sustainable Agriculture Program. All began with a mindset change. We have, to, we have the conventional agriculture in our culture, in our way of life, almost in our DNA. We, we already realize that investing in our soils is better than investing in a one cycle crop. Uh, I personally, I have increased the organic matter of my soils from 0.8 to 1.7%, pretty poor soils, sandy soils, in five years. So it's, it's good for, for me, no doubt. Um, too important was the hub structure, the knowledge, the platforms, the CIMIT germ plasma availability, the training sessions, the innovation networks, the innovation, the innovation delivery, the farmer to farmer delivery. In that time, I collaborate with the Masagro Highlands Hub as the Produce Foundation, which is a farmer association at my state. I, I am the president doing training sessions. Right now, we have that, that farmer to farmer technology deliver with the Global Farmer Network worldwide. Now, uh, the post Masagro edge, we are adopting te technologies as crop rotation, cover crops, forage crops, livestock integration in agriculture systems, reduced tillage to keep the straw over the soils, and developing, developing no-till machinery. That is a huge challenge, as Pilu knows. Finally, a great contribution of Masagro is the mitigation or adaptation of agri-food systems to climate change. Agriculture is part of the solution because of the carbon capture. Helping value cha chains to reach the net zero, the net zero when, when they are doing carbon inventories. I, I belong to a, to a value chain in Bali and the brew industry. Uh, and they are taking care of every drop, each drop of water. But they, they, they can't reach a net zero inventory of carbon if, if we don't uh, take, take us in, in, the, in, the, in, in the inventories because we are, we, we are, we are kidnapping that, that carbon. So it's, it's re, uh, really important job what, what we are doing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Guillermo. Yeah. Yes, that deserves a round of applause. And I think it is very important what you are mentioning, that today, if we want nutrition and resilience, we need to incorporate some of those underutilized or opportunity crops as yes. part of that Masagro model mm -hmm. that maybe started around maize and wheat systems, but can be used way broader. Um, with that, I'm actually going to change the order to make a bit of a surprise and I'm going to go to Lindewey because hearing these stories, we knew we were going to hear from a seed company. You and I visited a seed company in Africa, yep. a young woman setting up her seed company using maize as the starting point, but now in, in, incorporating multiple uh, other crops. When you hear those stories, what, 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 what's your thought looking at your continent and looking at Masagro in Africa? Thank you very much, Bram. But maybe just to say you introduced me as the chair of the CGIR system board. More important in my heart is the fact that I'm a farmer too. <laughs> so that's what makes me happy, sitting alongside with farmers who are in this humble profession of playing with the soil every day and knowing you have the responsibility of feeding not just your family, but feeding your country and the world. 
I could not ask for more. So thank you very much for doing that. So I came into contact with Masagro, as you know, when I sat in the CIMIT board from 2009, and I was there for six years. Masagro was born, and I was there when you made the promise when you got the award in 2014. But the big thing was we have a charge from Norman Bollock. Take it to the farmer, but more important, in his last days, he said, take it to Africa. It was such a joy to come back as a member of the system board to participate in the CIMIT board meetings. When I heard the progress that had been made from 2015 to 2023, I put my hand up and said, can't we take this to Africa? This is the time. I'm glad my colleagues agreed and we got generous support from the US government. Thank you for that. And you we were able, as Simit, to take Masagro to Africa. What's exciting is that we've now given it a new name. It's called Masagro Africa because our farmers are learning firsthand from Mexico, from other countries where you've been working. And as Africa, we are proud because we are seeing a change. We went to Zambia together. It's a pity Stephen could not join us. But what was inspiring for me is to see first our seed companies that have always pushed hybrid maize, now talking about other crops, crops that were previously ignored, that were not seen as high profit crops. And yet my grandmother used to produce from these crops feed us as her family, and now they're specialty crops and opportunity crops because we don't get them. We only get them for limited seasons because there's been no investment in seed. Through the investment that you've pushed, we have seed companies that are now producing cow peas, that are now going into lentils, things that we used to keep seed for and scout around during the rainy season, but now you can buy. Another exciting thing I saw is the small packs that allow our farmers to afford, rather than the 25 kilogram standard bag for maize, you can now buy smaller 10 kilogram, five kilogram packs of seed. That's something that our seed companies did not do. But more exciting, you now have new seed companies small investment, well-trained breeders that are now replicating seed and making it available through youth enterprises. We have agro dealers that are bringing the seed to the farmer's doorstep. Farmers don't have to board a bus to go into the city to buy the seed. It is now available. But these youth agropreneurs are not just bringing the seed. I saw them selling the hematically sealable bags I saw them giving advice on harvesting, agronomic advice, and also linking the farmers to markets. And these are young people who've taken up businesses in the village without having to go to the city. That was exciting for me. But more exciting through the innovations and your partnership, as CJR, as CIMIT, you've always produced these technologies, but you've never been able to take them to the farmer in an innovative way. Secretary Vislak today said, you've got to take it to the farmer, but show cause of what it means to the farmer where it matters most. It's not just the income, it's the social and environmental setting of the farmer. It's been exciting to see how youth have brought digital technologies to the farmers. As Pilu said, social media is active. They are receiving information through WhatsApp on the phones. But more important, they are sending information that's now broadcast through radio and television. And I saw those young entrepreneurs who are collecting the information uploading onto digital platforms that are then shown back to our farmers in the village. And there's no better way to learn than from a farmer to a farmer using digital technology. It's been amazing 
to be in the field with you, Bram, just to experience a new way, as Raj Shah said, we, we just need to find the charge was take it to the farmer, but we were never told how. And you've been innovative with CIMIT, partnering with other CG centers, but most important, partnering with relief agencies that previously disseminated technology were distanced from those who generated technology, particularly CJR. But I saw firsthand CRS, Catholic Relief Services, partnering, bringing their constituencies, the farmers they work with, side by side with CJR and going to the field so that we take it to the farmer and accompany the farmer and be on the ground to address. So for me, it's the multiple partnerships that Masagro Africa has been able to mobilize in a way we were not able to do before, but thanks to the experiences from the countries where you piloted Masagro. Thank you, Lindy Wei, and, and very important, I think, thank you, highlight how the last mile delivery partners are so important, but also how the network is so important that we can go and, and, and get uh, um, new sweet potatoes that are more nutritious where, 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 where they fit, and that we can actually leverage from all those uh, World Food Prize uh, winners and take that to the farmer through those last mile delivery uh, partners that are already there. But if we can give them the right information to take better decisions, we can make informed decisions and we can make the network work. And if you and I agree, I, I suggest we start lobbying, especially Mashal, so that maybe we can bring uh, Stephanie here next year to give her testimony. We will start with the visa procedures already today so that we for sure can make sure that she um, is yes. here. We have a couple of minutes, so I actually want to ask a challenging question. There's African farmers stepping into this, taking the same risk you took. You have told very beautiful stories, but what was the biggest challenge you had by applying the new technologies, making the mindset and the shift, and what would be your recommendation to Masagro Africa? Uh, well, um, I'm sure you will succeed. <laughs> because you, you are singing in, and you are uh, creating this uh, tool with a diverse partnership, mm -hmm. with diverse skills, and that is the most important thing in this, because we have to be all together with the same vision. Instead of having all of us different skills and different roles as actors, you know, in this system, but it's very important to have a, a real and huge diverse there in the system. And also, I will say the same, I'm sorry, but in my country, uh, we achieve more than 90% of the agriculture under no-till farming, you know, and that is a real good uh, number. And uh, of course, we need to um, grow in crop rotation with different crops also, with different markets, and we have a lot to improve. But perhaps the, um, the worst obstacle that we have in my country is around uh, the right policies. And I don't want to talk against only politicians. <laughs> I think that is a responsibility for uh, the both private and public sector. And so you are beginning, you have the chance to do all that together. And of course, we are able to help and to be part of this incredible mission. Thank you, and that's a challenge per se. Let's make sure we get the right information to private sector and politicians so they can make the right policies and can make this uh, possible. Guillermo biggest problem, issue, obstacle towards success? I, I think is the, to, to achieve a, a hub working, the, the machinery of the hub uh, taking oil in, 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 each, in, in each part, uh, is a strategy uh, 
a really important strategy the, to design the, the, the hub in regionally, uh, the, to, to have um, an, an, a network with the farmers, with, with the politicians, with the, the science, with the uh, financial, uh, with the insurance, uh, everything. Uh, in, 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 in the hub, uh, if you have a, a strong hub, you can, you can go with, with, with the politicians to, to ask for, for, for the right um, policy uh, public. Um, so I think the, the design of the hub is, is really important for, for our new Masagro. Thank you, and, and maybe highlighting how you, as with, with farmers, thanks to your data, could convince the Mexican government to transform subsidies towards uh, gasoline for tractors into actually, if farmers were committing to doing no-till, they would get five times the same subsidy, but to buy a no-till planter and no longer getting the, uh, the, the, the subsidy for the, for the diesel uh, for the tractor. So that was a data-based uh, incentive-based uh, policy that, that, thanks to the experiments on your farm, uh, were, uh, were possible. Anyway, I'm not going to ask a challenge, but if you would have a magic wand, what would be your one wish <laughs> to this room so that we could all succeed with the transformation we're looking for? For me, the big thing has been the investment in science. We said this morning that we're facing a big challenge, climate change. We cannot face climate change and enhance the challenge without understanding how to generate the answers. So let's invest in science, but most important, take the innovations to the people using innovative skills. So the magic wand, more money into research will help us combat climate change and be climate smart. So more money for be better brains and more cre creativity. Thanks a lot. So with that, we are at the end of this panel, but we are just at the beginning of this journey. So I would uh, like to invite all of you. There's huge potential in this room. I've said this before. Look at your left side. Look at your right side. I hope you recognize the potential in this room. But as Dr. Borlaug said, we haven't fed one family with potential. We need to turn it into reality. Thank you very much.